Arthur Jorge has a lot of work to do. It is the second match and the second loss. Botafogo lost to Cruzeiro three goals to two at the Mineirão Stadium in Minas Gerais. And that was an official game for the first round of the Brasileirão 2024. Welcome to Glorious Botafogo, the only place on the internet where you get Botafogo news in English. Go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. A frustrating result this Sunday afternoon. Botafogo, which started the game ahead of the scoreboard with a goal by Chiquinho Suarez, lost to Cruzeiro three goals to two. Botafogo had a horrendous, atrocious, embarrassing I think that's the word, embarrassing defensive performance against Cruzeiro, which is a team with all due respect, with all due respect to Cruzeiro. They're a giant of Brazilian football going through a very rough patch. But again, with all due respect, Cruzeiro is going to be fighting relegation. And if that's the case, then I think the alert sign needs to be turned on. Uh, alert sign would be more of a Brazilian way to say this but the light is an orange right now we got green orange and red it is an orange because if we keep Mateo Ponchi as a right back Lucas Alte as a center back and if we have Hugo as the immediate substitute to Marçal which I don't know if he left uh, injured again if he is injured there'll be another injury oh and with Cachito Fernandes on goal with all the respect that I have for Gachito Fernandes, we will be fighting relegation this season. It does not matter who is up front. It doesn't matter if we have Chiquinho Suarez. It doesn't matter if we have Junior Santos. It doesn't matter if we have Luis Henrique, Jefinho, which, by the way, if I was Arthur Jorge today and I saw and I was right there on the sideline and 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 witnessed live what Jefinho did was to miss that goal with no goalkeeper, with Junior Santos wide open to his left, I would have pulled him out immediately. I would have pulled him out of the match immediately. That was so irresponsible for Jeffin to do because if Botafogo scores right there, we go two up on the scoreboard, we go ahead, and the context of the game changes. Not only that, Jeffinho was the responsible uh, person for the for what caused what generated the play that led to Cruzeiro's second goal. So Jeffinho, I I would give him three out of ten overall today. Just completely awful, completely awful. And then if you want to talk about other parts that were awful, Lucas out there. Oh my God, I am so sorry. Look, I I usually I don't like to. To, to talk crap about the players or, you know, or the coach. But it gets to a point where it is unbearable. It is unbearable to watch Lucas Alte play with the Botafogo jersey. Just like I was livid with Thiago Nunes in the beginning of the year. I cannot stand the sight of Lucas Alte with a Botafogo shirt because Lucas out there is there just to be a body. He actually doesn't do anything as well as Bastos today didn't do anything. Oh, and let's talk about Alexander Barbosa coming in in the 20th minute of the second half, the 60th, uh, 65th minute, right? He came in at the 60, 65th minute of the second half and on minute 68, he gets a red card. And he gets sent off. How do you get sent off three minutes after you come into the match? Please explain to me. The play had already been called. The ref called foul for Botafogo. Alexander Barbosa thought it would be a great idea to go both feet first straight into the ankle of Mateus Pereira, which could have injured Mateus Pereira very seriously. No reason to do that at all. Oh, whatsoever. But yet, he, th he thought it would be all good. So it goes to show you that we don't have center backs. 
because you cannot rely on Alexander Barbosa to be sane 100% of the time. Alexander Barbosa, Bastos, and Lucas Alte, by the numbers that, that were uh, brought here by uh, Fogo Stats, which is a great channel. It's a great page on uh, X and Instagram. Uh, it's a lot about Botafogo statistics and all that and numbers. So ac according to Fogo Stats, those three guys, Barbosa, Bastos, and out there. They did not win a single individual challenge in this match. Zero. They lost all of their individual challenges against a forward from Cruzeiro. If we're going to keep that back line like that with Gachito Fernandes on goal, I am telling you, we will, we will be fighting for relegation because there's no easy game. There's, there's not going to be an easy match in the Brasileirão. All of the matches are going to be tough. All of the teams are going to be tough. We're talking about the first division, the, the first flight of, of Brazilian football. Number one, the first tier. Of course, it's going to be, uh, you know, three or four teams here and there. They uh, uh, are going to suffer long, long, long term because the, the amount of matches, maybe the lack of replacements. But we don't have replacements for the defense. Rafael just got injured again. I just don't... That is such bad luck for Rafael. He fractured his left patella right after he tore the patella tendon on that same knee. So we cannot we cannot rely on Rafael. We sure as hell can't rely on Mateo Ponte. He's not ready. He's 20 years old, but he's just not ready. He's not ready. And Damian Suarez is injured, and we don't know the extent of his injury. Nobody has said anything about that. And then on the left, we have Marçal... And we don't know what's happening with Masao. And we have Ugu, which defensively, Ugu is just as useful as a as a cone in training. One of those one of those dummies you use for uh, a wall for a free kick when you're practicing free kicks. That is Ugu defensively. Offensively, he does great, but he is not a defender. He's a he's a winger. Ugu is not a defender. Ugu is a winger. I'm sorry. It's just, we don't have a defense, we don't have a keeper. And then up front, we created some things here and there, but the players haven't assimilated what Arthur Jorge wants to do up front. So it just looks like four forwards up there, just playing whatever position, just constantly floating because I don't, I don't, I don't know if they know exactly what to do. So we have that, we have the fact that Jorge has a lot of work to do, the players are not assimilating which is, it's only their second match. And then defensively, it's chaos. Defensively, it is so bad. So bad. So bad. So due to all of this, you know, in Botafogo lost to um, Liga de Quito, LDU, and in the Libertadores, 1-0. Uh, the players are going to have a break tomorrow. Then they're back on Tuesday. And then the next match is going to be, the next match is going to be on Thursday. So we're four days from now. So you're going to rest one day and then you're going to have Tuesday. But even then, some of these players might be tired. Who, who knows how well they're going to be doing physically. And then on Wednesday, it's got to be a light training because on Thursday, we play Atletico Goianiense at home at 7.30. And then on Sunday, so you have Friday. And then on Saturday, you have a regenerative sort of rehab day. Then on Sunday, we play Juventus at home. And then on Wednesday, we play Libertadores. And then on Sunday, we play Flamengo. So there's not a lot of time here to, to get the team ready. There's not a lot of time to get these players in shape because Arthur Jorge today in the press conference after the game, he spoke that they found that the team physically is very below what they expected. So it's just frustrating. It's frustrating to know that it is in the middle of April and there's so many things wrong. So many things wrong. There's there's going to be this middle of the summer window where we're going to get Igor Jesus and Alain. Alain is going to be a lot of help in the midfield. But can we afford to wait till then? We have a Brazilian window right now that is open for, for you know, transfers inside the country. Botafogo needs to go shopping for a center back. 
right now. We need a, we need a center back. We need to see if we can find a left back. And then in the middle of the year, uh, when, when the European transfer window opens, John Tex is going to have to spend some money. If he wants Botafogo to perform like what the expectation is for this year is to be in the top six, if he wants that, he's going to have to go shopping for almost a whole brand new defensive line. We need to get John, the goalkeeper John, starting because Gachito Fernandes is not it anymore. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe or follow me if you are on social media. Um, but see what happens throughout the week if there's something else that I can uh, bring of value, that I can add some value and giving you information. I will bring it here on the channel. I'm thinking about doing small shorts, you know, just with my phone, just um, pull it up and start and start recording and then just post it as a short for super quick uh, video updates under 60 seconds or something like that. So let me know if that works for you. I'll catch you guys on the next video.